some of my best students over the years have been Jewish or Hindu or Muslim who on the first day of class uh, understand that this is a course in Catholic systematic theology and are interested and are eager to engage the subject matter and find deep resonance uh, between their own faith tradition. I had a Zoroastrian in class. I didn't know there were any Zoroastrians. It turns out there's a fire temple just up in Fremont here. Uh, and oftentimes they would come to the reading of texts, whether it's scripture or it's Denise Levertov's poetry or it's a Graham Greene novel, The Power and the Glory. They would come to the reading of these texts with a freshness and a curiosity and a profound respect that allowed them to see things that some of the more committed cradle Catholics um, would miss because they think they know the story already. They, they, I don't have to read the Bible because I've been going to church my whole life and I know everything about it. And well, I had a class in high school when I was a sophomore. I finished. Uh, fundamentalists, uh, evangelicals, uh, sometimes a bit more difficult uh, because as a Catholic theologian I may offer different interpretations of some of the central truths of the faith um, to talk about the effects of sin and the effects of sacraments. Uh, are we fallen and depraved or are we graced even in our sinfulness? Uh, perhaps I paint a, a picture of Jesus which is more complex uh, more ambiguous, uh, more uncertain than the one that they are comfortable with. Uh, I try very hard to be respectful. Uh, I try to map out different ways of reading the text. You know, we can read the text uh, this way. We can read it as literally true. And so Jesus did produce bread, you know, out of the basket, ex nihilo. God can do that. <laughs> Or maybe the people just began producing the lunches that they had brought with them and they began to share with each other. God could do that too. He could soften our hearts. Give us hearts of flesh where we had hearts of stone. Which of the two is a bigger miracle? A few card tricks? <laughs> or changing the hearts of the crowd? Uh, I think it's much easier to to calm the storm than to calm a crowd. He could calm the storms, but they shouted Barabbas, and he couldn't calm that or chose not to. But it's, I, I, it is a difficult... Well, religion is an explosive issue. You know, Once you begin to talk about God, there are few people who are blasé about this. There really are very few who come in and are unmoved by the questions. Uh, at times they get passionate, at times they get defensive, at times... I had my opening class last week for the spring quarter and I got a call from one of the students on his cell phone as he's on his way home or on his way to work after class, uh, very mad at something that I had said about religion because I had said that we can make distinctions between good and bad in religious traditions. Uh, and uh, he wanted to defend the position that every religious movement is good. And I said, well, Heaven's Gate or Jonestown or and he said oh those are not religions and I said well okay <laughs> we can sort of define out yes the Crusades were not a part of the Christian tradition and Jihad is not a part of Islam and clergy abuse is not a part of the present Roman Catholic Church and we can certainly do that uh, but it seems to to rob the questions of their complexity and to rob reality of, of its very nature and so religion becomes comfortable bedtime stories to lull us to sleep but that's not the type of honesty that I think uh, religion invites us to to see ourselves and others as God sees us.